Cobra's at a full crown. How many centimeters is she dilated right now, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Team Lethal fans? Mustang King in a house, and it's a fry -yay. Woo, 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 oh yeah. All right, guys, this is it. Episode four of the Cobra build series, the process. So, real quick before I get started on the car, it's been an extremely busy week for us here. I actually took delivery of the Lethal Performance first edition Bronco, which is a four-door uh, hard top in lightning blue. The truck is sick. We picked it up from Wiker Ford on Monday. On Tuesday, Christy and I, my creative art director, you know, Kooks Productions, we uh, flew up to New Hampshire for the Bronco off-rodeo. Really had no idea what is in store for, nor did I know the capability of the new Bronco. And I'll tell you what, it was an awesome experience. We got to drive our own uh, Bronco, which they supplied to us up there, um, all through these different trails and crawled. It was awesome, man. I really learned about the truck, all of its different features and stuff, which you'll be able to see in other videos from us once uh, once we start editing all that stuff. So, headed down towards Lujan Motorsports. Willie said he's got the engine about to come out of my car, so I want to check out the progress and how the car's going along, as well as ask Willie about the process in doing Coyote Swap on an SN car. I'm really not familiar with it, so I think it'd be kind of cool to show you guys. Where do we start? How's it go? What are the next steps? How are we doing this Cobra build? There's a couple other products that I was missing in episode three that had not shipped yet for my build. So one of the main pieces of the puzzle was a Gen 5 3.8 liter Whipple Supercharger kit, which is now shipped and is on the way. Thank you, Dustin and Whipple Superchargers. I actually got upgraded to the uh, Cobra Jet lid along with the Cobra Jet intercooler brick. I've got a 10 rib set up for it with a 20% over balancer, so I'm gonna make some boost. Another thing that uh, I was missing that actually Willie brought up to me and said, hey, what are we doing for a converter? So when I purchased the, uh, the Gen 3 Coyote swap set up with control pack for my car I ended up uh, just getting the standard factory uh, uh, converter with it so Willie said to me hey man you know what are your plans of the car you want to race it and uh, he said hey probably be a good idea right now I got it all apart the transmission out of the car the engine out of the car if you're gonna be doing a converter go and do it so reached out to my friends over at Circle D Specialties. They set me up with a 10 or 80 converter, very very similar to the one that I ran in the 2018 Mustang GT Project Gold Member, which allows us to launch the car in like the 3600, 3800 RPM range. And I was able to cut 127 60 foots width, go 860s at 157 miles an hour. And even though my Cobra Coyote Swap isn't gonna be a streetly like track car, it's gonna be driven on the street. So um, I wanted to do a converter that's gonna work very well for the street, but as well give me really good ability to launch the car harder at the track so these guys got me all set up I've got the converter in the back over here I got some other parts as well the other thing I did not know about was what I was gonna do for the brakes so what we decided with is to go with some bare six piston brakes front and rear I've got custom engraved Cobro lettering into it and they're also painting them to match the color of the blower and the car which is grabber blue very excited about that thank you bare brakes really appreciate that um, I also didn't know what wheels is going to choose for it, so I ended up deciding to go with those classics, the CCW classics, 18 by 11 in the rear, 18 by 9.5 up front. We're going all black, black bolt. I'm ready to rock out with a sick wheel setup. And I think for the most part, those are the real big pieces that I was missing, and they're already in the works or on the way already. So let's go over to Willie's place, check out the progress of my build, speak to him about the process, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I made it. I'm basically almost down in Cuba. What, another 20 miles south of here <laughs> in Cuba? <laughs> Lujan Motorsports, I got my man Willie here. Uh, my Cobro build, here we go. Part uh, four of our series right now. This is the process, so Willie uh, called me up. He said, come on down, we're about to drop the motor out. This is my uh, old motor, it's a Texas block. Um, I think uh, built, Al Pepito built it. Got some uh, manly I-beams in it, uh, Chris Darn's heads. This is the uh, old school uh, four liter Whipple supercharger on there. So this sucker all coming out and we're gonna put the Coyote in. So why I'm calling this episode the process is because for me, as well as a lot of other people have asked me about this build, I don't know much about it. So we start off, when you get a car like this Willie in here, what's the deal? What do you do first and how do we go about it? 
Obviously, you get all the parts first. You need all the parts. <laughs> yeah. uh, in this day and age, get a bunch of parts. Yeah. Um, from there, well, when we we'll pull the motor out, just uh, whatever we're going to use from this motor. Basically, on this build, we're using the AC compressor, the power steering from this vehicle. We're going to still use the same one, together with some brackets from uh, PBH to make it all work to back together. You know, back to like factory locations, everything with AC and all. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do get to retain AC? AC, power steering, you're gonna have all that. Same imagine not having AC. The, the power steering I could probably do is, as long as I have AC down in AC South Florida. AC is gonna work. Oh, uh, nice, awesome. Florida's great with AC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you could live without the AC down here, but uh, yeah, Cora's first car had no AC, my wife's car, but so yeah, I definitely gotta have AC, man. Um, so drop the motor out, right? And then drop the motor we'll... in tranny, this one's gonna come down, I'm gonna pull it out to the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna set it up on a table, we're gonna raise the car on the lift and the motor's gonna just hang on the table. And then the same process to put the other motor back in. Once I assemble everything, I put it on the table and from the bottom up. Okay, and I was talking about um, that stuff because I'm really not familiar. When I went over the, the Coyote Swap stuff with Jake at Power by the Hour, he said it's all based around that power steering thing. And I know when I first got down here, we we're talking about this just before we called Jake. We had some like concerns about you know relocating the alternator and that that Gen 5 blower set up on here. And what what exactly what we were talking about there? there it's basically there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can like I said use a factory power steering pump, or you can get an additional separate uh, electric power steering pump that they sell. Uh, we can use that also, and we can leave the alternator on the Coyote in the stock location. Okay. Or um, on this case, we're gonna we're using the power uh, power by the hours bracket to relocate the alternator. Uh, they have it also to work with the Whipple. Okay. Um, so it's gonna move the alternator. It's gonna from move the location? alternator from the stock location to the front here, over here, right around here, this area on okay. the Coyote motor. And then we use the power steering back in the in the same location. Got it. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So I guess uh, we're gonna. Drop this sucker out. This is this will be a, eventually an artificial reef that I'll be able to fish on yeah. since it hasn't run in years. We're just gonna drop it to the bottom of the ocean and, and then take hopefully, it out on your boat and drop it. Yeah, collect some lobsters off of it and stuff of that, and maybe do some snapper fishing on it eventually. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I have no idea what I've been doing, but it's been sitting for a while, as you guys can see. Uh, like tons of rust in here. Willie said the first thing too when I got down. He said, "Man, I would recommend getting a, a new radiator." It's been sitting with you know old water, probably with no type of uh, you know antifreeze in or anything like that, so it's all gunked up and rusted out and stuff. So I'm gonna get myself a new uh, radiator for it and uh, whatever other parts that uh, Willie suggests me to get for the Cobro build. And uh, there you have it, guys. So we'll watch a little bit of this process, dropping it out. And do you actually need me to help you with this? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. No, well, you can uh, help. Just, you sit back and watch. You can push the button on the lift or you can sit back and watch. Awesome, I, I love watching this. That's great. There we go, my baby. She's coming back to life. Cobra. This car has been through a lot. As you can see there, there's a little old, old uh, nitrous line run uh, through there. At some point I ran nitrous on this thing back in the day. I even forgot about that until I saw it. Got the Cook's headers up in there, which are, uh, everything's coming out for the Coyote Swap. It's like having a baby. My Cobra's at a full crown. How many centimeters is she dilated right now, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Got Willie's daughter helping out over here. Family biz. Good stuff. Go. 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 So I've seen people pull motors out of the top with like a little crane deal, but from the guys I know, the pros, they like to take it out of the bottom. It seems to be the easy way to do it, or the better way. I can't wait to get this car up on the Tap it to go up, Mom. More. 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 Hold on. Got a good helper. All the way up. 
Think like 10 different people oh. it's been all over the world actually um bart did a bunch of the work early on bart tobiner oh yeah yeah bart did a bunch of work on it and um i think pretty much that's it who got it back together with the blower then ken tuned it and then um i let it sit forever so that's the timeline basically i never really got to enjoy the car much after it got put back together also, with the four liter it. it was still running yeah it was still running yeah Yep, uh, my balancer, as you can see here, the, the OEM, uh, you know, that lower pulley setup, he's got it all welded up because uh, that broke on me and those were real hard to find, so, but he got it back together and, and it did run for a while and it was nasty, I mean, it, you know, was on uh, Steve at Thunder's Dyno, put the like 870 something wheel horsepower down on an E85, but we had to run a lot of boost on it, I mean, we're running like 30 pounds of boost because it's a stock compression, stock bore motor. Because back then, yeah. E85 wasn't even a thing. Yeah, it wasn't. Like, no, no one was really, you know, when this car was built back then, I didn't know to people were, you know, hey, up the compression a point or two, you know, 10 to 1, 9.5 to 1 is going to yield a lot better results on, on E85 setup, which we didn't know about. So it was basically built for, like, you know, 93 or, like, some race gas, but the E85 stuff we had no clue about. So um, if I were, obviously, to do it again or ever i think if i'm going to put this motor into like a fox body i'll probably have it you know pulled apart cleaned up and put some high compression pistons in there so that i can benefit more from the blower so i don't have to spin a blower as hard right and i benefit from the the power quite a bit so because now e85 is like the the cat's meow pull up on the turnpike and basically pump out race fuel right that's it there you go when I had the car painted, I had the motor out of it, which is cool. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, they got the whole engine bay done and they stuff and the job. firewall. Yeah, they did a real good job on it. And uh, there we go. Got that uh, original T56 in there with a McLeod RXT. No more T56. No more manual. <laughs> Time for that 10 R80 life. A lot of people are going to be hating that. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't like it. There's a lot of people that do like it. I mean, it's... Here's the thing, it's my car, I want to enjoy it as much as possible, and I want to go quick, and I, I don't have it in me to, to drive a thousand horsepower car down the track in a manual, that's, that's not me. I don't have that experience or the, uh, the Coney's to do it, so I'll, uh, I'll stick with the 10 or 80 life. <laughs> you know, foot brake at the 3600, let it rip. Smooth down the track. You've got to use it already. Yeah, yep. Got uh, since it's a solid axle car, Got some uh, magna packs on there. This is extremely loud setup. We'll stick with this for now. That's not, I'm looking at it. I'm just saying this is the thing supporting the engine while he's lifting it up and stuff like that. But this is actually specifically made that for. That table was made in 1996 to uh, take out a two valve on a 96 uh, two valve motor that I did on a customer back when I started back in the dull days. So. And it makes life easy now. Oh, You've got a lot easier. Set up. I probably used it a hundred times or more. <laughs> you got the proper size blocks all set up for it and stuff like that. Do we have a coyote table? Is there a special coyote no, table? Same table. Same, same table. table. Just same different, same different blocks? Different blocks. That's different nice, blocks. dude. That's, that's a special table, man, right there. Yo, tricks of the trade, man, honestly. Like, you know, people don't think about this stuff when you're doing a build like that. Work smarter, not harder. Yeah, exactly. That's, so. that's why we're here, to do it the right way and, right and way. Uh, not mess around and uh, have someone who's done it before handle it for me because I'm not in the business of working on cars. That's Willie's deal. And he does a that's fine job at it and that's why my car's here. So there you go, there's a special custom table <laughs> for the 4.6 from the 90s, dude. How come it's not like hot pink and stuff like that, man? No. And ne neon yellow or anything like that nah. from the 90s? Nah, too shocking. Okay, too sweet. Too shocking for me. So we actually, uh, we're gonna, um, the heater, Right? Hoses? Those are heater hoses? No. What do they call that? No, heater core. Heater core. All right. So the heater core. No, we're not going to use. We're not going to use. 
I don't need a heater down here in South Florida, so we're going to trim those back and cover them up so we have a little more clearance at the back of the blower. Uh, pretty much like this cable stuff right here, all this junk. The quadrant's coming out. It goes. We're not going to be using that anymore, so that stuff is going. No more stick shift. No more stick shift, yep. No more stick shift. Sorry, guys. Um, Willie was uh, looking at this. This is where the new uh, design, I guess, uh, four performance shifter for the setup goes in there. Might need a little bit of work, but we'll see uh, if we get crafty with it and figure it out. So uh, what we'll do is I'll be back here uh, possibly in about a week to uh, check up with Willie. We'll, we'll follow up uh, midweek or so, see what he's doing. But the plan is to come back down maybe in a week from now, have the Coyote motor pretty much assembled and ready to go in, make sure everything fits right, um, start assembling that stuff, and get it ready to roll, and then we'll update you the next uh, portion of the build. So awesome, Willie. Thanks, Thanks man. Thanks. Yeah, buddy. Thank you, it, bro. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, please. I love to hear what you guys think about my build. If you have any questions or anything, post them up there so that myself or Willie can help me answer them for you guys and uh, show you guys how it's done. Thanks.